Um, we are at the, the Pierre Lachaise Cemetery, which is uh, Paris' biggest cemetery. And um, the reason why uh, why we're here is um, that last year I uh, recovered from a, uh, a year of uh, illness. Um, I was actually convinced that I was going to die and uh, was on antibiotics uh, yeah, for a year, a whole year actually. Um, and on my recovery, I uh, borrowed an apartment down here and uh, took a random stroll <laughs> at this place because the apartment is very close to. And uh, suddenly I looked into one of the mausoleums and uh, it hit me really, really hard in the in the stomach. What I saw, and uh, uh, that was actually the the beginning of the project that I'm working on now, and have been working on for the last eight months. There was a huge bouquet, bouquet of flowers made in silk, I assume, but then with a giant spider web, or not just one spider web, but hundreds of spider webs on top of it. And um, it was it was really painful uh, because, and I think at that moment I I began to, to, began to realize that um, that we are going to be forgotten. Uh, that even that some people love us, that we are mean some something to somebody, we will eventually be forgotten. And uh, maybe I had felt that feeling of being forgotten when I was sick, because the moment you get sick, you're um, uh, you're not capable of uh, as many things as you were before. So. If your friends are going hiking, you know, they say, ah, Balder, he probably can't go with us. He's, uh, he's too ill. Uh, uh, going out, uh, maybe, maybe he can't stand a whole concert. Uh, we, will, um, uh, we will do it without him, you know. So, so slowly uh, f you, you kind of count it out. Uh, and uh, I was sometimes, you know, hit by this feeling of, being forgotten, uh, and it, uh, and and I also think that maybe, maybe what we are, many of us are doing in life, and maybe especially artists actually, is to make some marks uh, in our life, uh, something that means something, uh, that uh, the world is a. Uh, uh, just a little better place when we leave it than than when we came. Uh, that we have raised some uh, good children, or we have uh, built something that's uh, worth something for the next generation, etc. Uh, but seeing this you know, was was uh, was really painful, actually. So I've been walking uh, the cemetery for the for the last eight months, uh, looking into uh, all the a lot of the mausoleums. Half of them, I think, there are around ten thousand, and um, 
I've yeah, I've been looking into five thousand of them, I think, and uh, many of them they are they are scattered, they are uh, empty of content. Uh, it, it deteriorates very fast when a window is broken. Uh, so then it's uh, the content uh, yeah, disappears within, uh, I don't know, five, ten years range. Uh, but some of them are, are pretty well preserved and uh, uh, they stand as a kind of a, yeah, almost like a nature mort. Uh, and, uh, and reminds, reminds me of the the hard fact that uh, eventually first you will die and then you will be forgotten It's obvious, it's obvious that somebody has loved somebody. Uh, when you look into, you know, where the, the most touching ones, I think, is where you can actually really see that there is a love, there has been a love, there was a love between some people, somebody, someone who is dead, somebody uh, that's alive. Uh, there's a love and it, it needs a place and uh, the mausoleum is a private place uh, compared to a, a gravestone that is a public place and the uh, uh, mausoleum is a, is a private space so uh, these um, tableaux, uh, natural modes, they, they also become private uh, so it is a love from one person to another but at a certain point uh, it just uh, is left there could be that the person who loved died or fell in love in somebody else. <laughs> um, many things could happen. They could have moved out of Paris, uh, um, uh, and uh, and and then this uh, uh, gesture of love is left behind. And in some of some cases, I think that they have been left been left behind for you know more than 100 years. Uh, Pierre Lachaise is from 1804 uh, and uh, if, uh, some of them seems to be <laughs> almost uh, uh, as, as old. So um, uh, and, and I think that it's in the beginning I, I kind of I didn't want I, I, I couldn't accept it you know that we that this is that the reality is that we will be forgotten at some point, you know. I, it's, it's, uh, uh, I try to ignore it, I try to say, ah, but, you know, maybe uh, finding reason why I would not be forgotten, but the, the, the longer time I've, I've been here, I, it's, it's just, uh, uh, I've come to a, a point of acceptance that uh, first you die, then you will be forgotten. Actually, in the beginning, I began to stroll from, uh, you know, from random uh, mausoleum to ma mausoleum and uh, looked in, took some pictures. Uh, but um, but at, at, a, at a point, I, you know, I discussed it with my father, uh, who's 
always been my creative uh, supporter, uh, f- uh, person who I've discussed my ideas with, and he said, everybody can go to Pierre Lachaise and shoot some nice pictures, uh, but uh, if you want to make it something that's uh, something that's worth for for a lot of other people you have to uh, be uh, take it all the way um, then at a point I said okay um, I'll I'll work it thoroughly <laughs> through and uh, then I started you know taking each sections uh, after section I had when I planned it actually I thought well in within a week I could cover the whole place uh, now I've been going on for eight months uh, I think I've been here 30 35 times or so um, and I'm only halfway uh, so um, it is uh, uh, and you could say yes there are there are lots of uh, uh, Reveticians. Uh, there are many Madonnas in there, <laughs> for example. But uh, at least I think every day when I have been walking here for three hours and so you know, I find one place that strikes me as being uh, outstanding in, in in some way that it uh, and in a way that where it works as. Uh, you know, as telling these the story of the forgotten ones. Ironically, uh, when I was here some months ago, uh, my father called me and uh, told me that uh, he had been uh, at the hospital uh, overnight. Uh, he didn't feel well, uh, and he was um, afraid that he will pass away soon uh, he could you know he could sense it on on the doctors and had asked very directly and they said yes you have uh, you have severe cancer uh, and it's uh, and it's in the liver and it's probably gonna be pretty fast so uh, he asked me to come home and I did and I must admit I I've n- I cried like uh, like I've never cried before. Yeah, I think this uh, you know this project has made me think about uh, yeah the important and it's 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 maybe it's a cliche but we all have to go through the cliches. To be in in, uh, in in the present, be uh, uh, don't wait for you know for tomorrow. To uh, he was actually if he hadn't been sick, you know, he should have been with me. You know, he wanted to uh, to uh, to to uh, to be here, you know, with me. But you know, he didn't manage uh, because yeah, he died. Um, but it. Um, yeah, it it made me realize that um, maybe I should just do the things that I want to do in life and um, live with the fact that pro- probably not very many people care when <laughs> when I'm when I'm gone, and maybe it's it's a it also maybe maybe it is also an awkward worry to to. Uh, this worry of not being eternal, you know, why do we do that? Why is it so hard for us to uh, grasp the fact that, that we are, uh, that we don't live forever? Uh, it's, um, that it has an end. Uh, it's, um, and maybe, maybe it's, it's actually c- causing us a lot of troubles uh, uh, when we live that we care so much about ourselves for when we are not alive.